simple sprains to highly complex surgeries, the Orthopedic Center of Palm Beach County has been serving the South Florida community for over 65 years with the finest orthopedic and pediatric care. Our physicians are each experts in their field, providing a complete spectrum of musculoskeletal care from prevention and diagnosis to treatment and rehabilitation for every part of the body in both children and adults. Our doctors are able to perform the most advanced treatment options available, including PRP therapy, stem cell, arthroscopic surgery, and microsurgery. At the Orthopedic Center of Palm Beach County, we are dedicated to providing a comprehensive solution to get you back to your routine as quickly as possible in the shortest period of time with the least amount of inconvenience. With three beautiful new offices located in Lake Worth, Poynton Beach, and Wellington, we are able to provide much needed care to families in the South Florida area. Give us a call at 561 567-6500. From our experienced physicians to the most advanced treatment options to our state-of-the-art facilities and excellent support staff, the Orthopedic Center of Palm Beach County is committed to providing you with the very best care. Call us at 561-967-6500 or find us at www.ocpbc.com. If you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. What do you believe? Who is the only person who can stop you? Only you. When was the last time you have someone holding your vision, your dreams for you? When was the last time someone held you accountable for achieving them? That's when Lorena Anderson steps in and becomes your coach, your personal energy coach. With her powerful and proven techniques, she will assist you in assessing and accelerating your maximum potential. One of the most powerful tools is quieting your mind and relaxing your body. It allows you to de-stress and calm and eventually brings your happy back. If finding your happy is important to you, please call the energy shifter Lorena Anderson at 954-647-5525 to schedule a free half-hour phone session or email her at lorenaanderson at gmail.com. She's looking forward to connecting with you. Caller. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954-717-7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hi, welcome to You and Your Doctors. I'm Lorena Anderson, your life and energy coach, and this is being presented by AMP2 TV, sponsored by All County Healthcare, where patients are the, the primary care of what they do. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is that I just heard that we are now streaming live on Facebook. So you can find us on All County Healthcare, uh, on the Facebook page. So tap into that. You'll also be able to follow us on WWNNRadio.com as well. And we're also streaming live on AllCountyHealthCare.com. So we have many different uh, different ways for you to be able to tap in, to be able to watch us. You know, the main reason why All County Healthcare is sponsoring this is because they want to help you be more informed be able to make those very important decisions that are for your own health care. And that's, that's the main reason why they're sponsoring this. You can find us here every Tuesday evening between 6 and 7, and we have many different professionals on, not only doctors, but also other people that help in, in teaching you and educating you about your health care, whether it's from Medicare versus Medicaid and how to understand that, but also to all the other rehab centers that might be out there. So we try to bring in a good range of, of individuals so that you can make the choices that are so necessary to you. So we also would love for you to call in 
to the radio station at 888-565-1470 with any of the questions that you might have for our guests this evening. The other thing you can do is that you can call All County Healthcare at 888-717-7170. Ask for Maddie, because she would love to help you with any of your healthcare needs. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our first guest. Her name is Dr. Maynard, and please share with us uh, where your practice is located, the name of your practice, and how they get to um, get a hold of you. Well, hello, Lorena. I'm so happy to be here, to be a part of your show. Um, I am Dr. Maynard. I am a family practice um, physician. I'm a primary care physician here. I practice in Deerfield. Okay. And um, in Deerfield, we are on Military Trail and Southwest um, 10th Street. Okay. Um, our number there is 954-570-7270. And then in Tamarack on Knob Hill Road, and that's pretty close to Kings Point, okay. the number there is 954-718-8700. That's wonderful. Now, I'm going to ask you one more time. Now, audience, please get your pen out and your paper because I'm going to have her repeat those telephone numbers so that you also have direct access to Dr. Maynard so that if you have any questions, you can get a hold of her personally. So get your pen and paper out. Okay, one more time. One more time. Uh -huh. Come back, 954-718-8700. And we are located on Knob Hill Road, and it's pretty close to Kings Point. Mm -hmm. And then in Deerfield, we are on the corner of Military Trail and 10th Street. Um, and the number there is 954-570-7270. And we are a part of Medical Center Affiliates, or MCA. Oh, okay, great. NCA, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, please give us a call. And welcome to all of our Facebook listeners. It's wonderful to have you here as well. This is uh, this is up and coming for us. So we're, we're very, very excited to have you join us. And if you have any questions whatsoever, as I said, you can call in directly to All County Healthcare at 888-717-7170 and ask for Maddie. She would love to answer any of your questions. So m let's get on with uh, finding out all about you. Um, tell me, first of all, what inspired you to become a doctor? Well, um, Lorena, I came to medicine sort of in a roundabout way. Most people, um, they go to high school, they graduate college, and they know they want to be doctors, and they go to medical school. Uh -huh. With me, I was born in Guyana in South America. It's a small wow. um, South American country, mm -hmm. not very well known, but um, it's the only South American country that is predominantly English-speaking. Oh. And I was born and reared there, uh -huh. um, got a bachelor's degree there, and then I got married, had two daughters, and I migrated to the United States with my husband. Uh -huh. Um, in Guyana, I worked in research. I had a bachelor's degree in biology and chemistry. We came to the United States, and I worked again in research. Uh -huh. um, I didn't find it very fulfilling, and I was searching for something else. I knew there was something missing. Uh -huh. um, many of my family members are nurses, and my aunts sort, sort of encouraged me to go into nursing. They just felt that healthcare was where I should be. Uh -huh. um, and so I went back to school and became a nurse. Um, nurses do great work. Yes, they, they do. They yeah. very hands-on. They take good care of patients. But I found that um, more and more we were being asked to interpret what the doctors said. To After the doctors had made their rounds and left, um, I was explaining to patients what the doctor really meant. What was wrong with him? <laughs> oh, thought, oh, I, I understand I could do that. this. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like a translator yes. of sorts. And so back to school, I went. Oh, my um, goodness. And then, as, as you know, to get into medical school, you have to do four years of college. Um, I had a bachelor's degree in nursing, a bachelor's degree in biology. Mm -hmm. Then I went to medical school at the University of Miami. Oh my goodness, that's mm -hmm. amazing. So, may I ask, uh, you know, you are you 
pretty much not the traditional student, as you had already said. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what age did you end up going back to become a doctor? I went to medical school when I was 35. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. That is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I ended up as well going back to school very late in life, and uh, and there was this joke because, as you know, we were considered uh, non-treads, non-traditional mm -hmm. students, right? Mm -hmm. Well, well, my nickname was a retread. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I, I, but it's more difficult. But boy, that's amazing. So, when you went into medical school, how long did you have to attend then? Um, medical school is typically four years. So, if uh -huh. you pass all of your classes. You, you you complete medical school in four years. Okay. And then at the end of four years, um, you go into a residency program. I did a, a residency in family medicine at the okay. University of Miami Jackson Memorial Hospital. Oh, yeah. The family medicine program there is one of the oldest in the country. Wow. And um, because Jackson is a tertiary care institution, mm -hmm. the program there is very heavy in internal medicine, okay, um, prenatal care, um, but also an emphasis on establishing good patient relationships and communicating well with, with patients, the importance of that. Wow, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so how long have you been practicing and what is your specialty then? So my specialty is family medicine. Uh-huh. And like I said, the family medicine doctor can take care of patients from birth all through the lifespan. However, when I was done my family medicine residency training, I made a decision to focus my practice on the older adults. Uh -huh, okay. So I um, see myself as a geriatrician. Okay. You know, all of my practice has been spent mostly with patients 65 and over. Oh, well, that is really interesting. And and I'm sitting here <clears> going, <throat> you don't look a, a day over 35, 36, and to be going to medical school at that age. Well, I love that. That's, that's very... <laughs> that's a compliment. Oh, absolutely. You, uh -huh. you look fabulous. Well, what is, um, you know, you said that you're mainly in geriatrics now, 65 and older. What do you see as some uh, of the main concerns that they have? Well, as as we as we age, um, our functional capacity declines. Mm -hmm. um, it's just natural, um, and and so we as the physicians taking care of of, of older patients, um, our role, our 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 job is to get them through those stages of aging as healthy as they can. We mm. encourage them to be as active and to live as healthy and as, as, as functional as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, after residency, I joined the medical center affiliates uh -huh. and um, we see, like I said, mostly patients 65 and, and over. And I think what separates us to many other medical practices is that we give the patients the time and the attention, and we focus on keeping them healthy so that they could live their best life throughout the lifespan. We, we are not a doctor's, a typical doctor's office that puts patients in every oh, yeah. 10 or 15 minutes. You're right, you're right. Um, we respect our patients. We, we, I think we understand that patients, even though they're older, they have active, busy lives. Yes, they do. And and we're living older and older these days anyhow. Yes, and, and, and their time is precious, and we, yes. we, we respect that. So we want to get them in. We want to keep them as healthy as they can be uh -huh. and, and respect them and, and get them out. That's fabulous. So what are some of the things that you put into place? You know, when you're working with an individual, what are some of the areas that you are concentrating on for that individual? Well, for me personally, um, my philosophy, I, I believe in empowering patients. Mm -hmm. I think, I believe that, that patients should be an active partner in their health and in their care and in the decision-making 
um, of their treatments and 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 everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I believe if you empower the patient, then the patient is more likely to be compliant oh, with what you recommend that they yes. that they do. That uh-huh. they feel they they have goals that are set by you and uh-huh. the patient, uh-huh. and the patient is more likely to 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 follow those goals. What I try to do is to is to dispel the myth of the physician being the all knowing person. Mm-hmm. So when I'm mulling over um, a decision about a patient's treatment, mm-hmm. I let the patient know what I know, and I also let them know what I'm not sure about their condition or the treatment. I let them know what are the choices as far as treatment uh-huh. and why my recommendation is probably the best option for them at that point in time. Excellent. Um, I love that, that you t- take into consideration, you know, what, how they're thinking about themselves, what they're able to do and capable of doing, mm-hmm. and then working along with them to come up with a, a, almost like a customized plan for them and something that they're going to apply, not only be committed to, because they're working with you instead of, you know, you dictating to them. Exactly. I love that. And then the ability of applying uh, and 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 doing what you have recommended. Yeah, I think patients feel respected when you approach them that, Absolutely. that way. Absolutely, and and they feel a part of the decision making. And when yes. they do, they're more likely to, to follow, follow through. your recommendations. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's really interesting. You know, um, yeah, as I said before, I'm a, a a life and energy coach. So one of the things that I do is that I teach people how to pay attention. So you explaining to me and our audience listeners here that um, you pay a lot of attention to your patients and give them the time to be able to talk to you and share with you what they're going through and what you know the ailments are or, and or the concerns are and and just your ability of paying that attention that's the greatest gift you can give them exactly I, that's what i think you know i was reading an, an article in the washington post um a few weeks ago um an article written by um i think her name is miss sun s u n and and i'll read you what what she said okay um and she opened with how often have you gone to doctors and had the following happen they truly listen they ask about the worst part of your pain they walk with you from the examination room to the reception area wow and she answered i've never seen that happen ever. she answered she said <laughs> exactly for most americans such moments are rare yeah well i was shocked because, Lorena, I do this every day. Wow. This is the way I practice. I love practicing medicine, and I think it shows. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> I can feel you. Yes, yes. you're very passionate. I, yes. I, I love the interaction with the patient. I love helping patients help themselves. Because you know what? Many days, I think... I get more help from the patients than the patients get from me. I love that. You know, that's when the the, the teacher, you know, the, the 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 teacher arrives exactly at the time that the student needs needs that teacher, but it's the other way around as well. You know, that that teacher also needs the student because, you know, that's mm-hmm. how they end up fulfilling their own life's purpose and and they get so much out of it. That's how we learn about humanity. Yes. You know, is through asking questions of our students. Yes. So I'd yes. just like to take this time and say thank you so much, uh, All County Healthcare, for bringing these doctors, and especially Dr. Maynard, here to share with us about her expertise and what makes her different. And, uh, I've got to tell you, there's just there's something so warm and so uh, compassionate when you have somebody who really listens to you. So I would just like to say, you know, thank you, All County Healthcare, for for sponsoring this this show because it, it's so wonderful. How do you find out about doctors like this? And it's through this this venue that All County Healthcare has put together for us. So if you have any questions for All County Healthcare, please give them a call at 888-717-7170. Ask for Maddie. She would love to help you with any of your healthcare needs. And also, if you have any questions for the doctor this evening, please give us a call at 
565-1470-1470. We would love to hear from you. Yes, we would. Yes, we would. <laughs> <laughs> so I do you do any community outreach how do you interact with the community yes and I, and I told you a few minutes ago I believe in empowering patients yes yes so I think education is a big part of empowerment mm -hmm. and what I try to do is to get out into the community I visit um, community centers like the focal point that that um, where older patients go and do do craft they dance, oh, okay. they, they do all sorts of interesting yeah. things. So I, I go to communities, to community centers like that, uh -huh. assisted living facilities, nursing homes, wow. maybe a section eight community for older adults. Uh -huh. And I give um, educational hmm, seminars is sort of a, a, a big word, but we have fun. I, um, I talk about things like how to avoid falls. The importance oh. of physical activity as we age. Yes. The importance of staying as, as functional as you possibly can. Yes. Um, and I aim to help patients have a better relationship with their physicians. We do some role That's play. That's very interesting. You know, when you go see your doctor, uh -huh. you should be, be prepared to have a conversation. Uh -huh. So you go in and, and you don't want to just sit there and be spoken to, but you want to be an active part. You need to speak. You need to come in with your questions. You need to listen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Exactly. Um, exactly. And, and so this is what I do in the, in the community. Uh -huh. um, because like I said, I believe in, in the empowerment of, 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 of patients. Absolutely. I totally, I completely and totally agree with you because I always believe that quality of life adds to quantity of life. So when you have the quality of life, when you're feeling good about who you are, when you're energetic, mm -hmm. you know, when, yeah, yeah, you're going to wake up with aches and pains, you know, that's just part of the part aging of process. Yes. But, but if you have the ability of continuing to keep that smile on your face and to count your your blessings you know be grateful for what you do have and how you are functioning mm -hmm. it makes all the difference in the world it does it does and 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 re reminding patients to do that uh-huh reminding yeah, them to 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 be grateful and helping them to not concentrate so much on what's wrong yeah, but, yes. but what's what's good about their 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 life yeah, exactly exactly and you know Lorena many times patients come to see you not because they're ill right for many patients it's it's a social visit <laughs> because many older adults are lonely they, they live alone, um, their friends live far away, the family lives far away. Yeah. So we encourage them to get out. At one of our offices, we have what's called an activity center that's co-located with that office. And at the oh. activity center, um, older adults in the community can come in for computer classes. Oh my um, goodness, is that they, wonderful? They, they play games, they may watch a movie, um, there's few um, free food there, oh. canned food, you know, oh, other okay. types of food that they yeah. can take away. And then they get, you know, a free breakfast. And they it's almost like a day uh, daycare yes. for them. Yeah. And they, they get to socialize with, with other people uh -huh. their, their, their age. That yeah. is wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Well, that, that's really different it, it is yeah that is that is. is really quite something else you know that y you don't find that in a doctor's office or, or you know a center for dealing with patients but that is really that's amazing yes i think when when you're taking care of the older population you have to think about not just picking a prescription pad up and writing them the next prescription yeah it's about their well-being we we have nurses um who work for MCA, that if I was concerned about a patient's well-being, maybe we called the home and we've been calling, the patient didn't come in for the appointment, mm -hmm. that um, I can, you know, send an email to one of those nurses and ask them to go out and do a well check on the patient. You know, mm -hmm. maybe the, I feel the patient is not taking their medications the way they should. 
send the nurse out to help them organize their medications. We have to think outside the box when we're taking care yeah. of older adults. Yes, and you're right. You know, the majority of the time, especially down here in Florida, and their, their families are not around. You know, they've mm-hmm. come down to retire, to get out of the cold weather. Yes. And, uh, and, you know, they really don't have anybody. And a lot of times also is that, you know, if they don't have a social outlet and someplace to go that, that provides that kind of community activities, uh, they do, they isolate. Yes. And, and they don't get out. Yeah, some older adults, they, they, they don't have money for food. Uh-huh. We'd never know that. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if, if you don't talk to them, if you don't get to the home, or um, you tell them, oh, we have food here. You can come pick some food up, and then you see them arrive for the food, and you see them come on a regular basis, then you know that they're actually in need. Yes. So if you're writing them pills, but you're not taking care of the whole person, yeah, you they may not be you know living the the healthy life or you wonder why it is that they're not progressing and then you realize that all these other things are missing i see well that's very it is very progressive because as you know you know there are quite a few different clinics out there and everything you're lucky to get 10 minutes and the other thing too that i want to commend you on is that not only listening but making sure that they understand what they're hearing because a lot of times you can you can tell them what they need to hear you know and what you want them to do uh, but but because they're out of their own element it's it's not sinking in yes that's so, that's very true and that's because i think we don't do a good enough job we tend to speak this is physicians providers in in medicalese medical language that mm-hmm. oftentimes the patient doesn't understand and oftentimes mm-hmm. the patient is too embarrassed to tell us that they don't understand yeah. um one of the classes that i do is helping helping patients get the most out of their doctor's visit and so i encourage patients that when you come to your doctor before you come to your doctor's visit mm-hmm. write down the things the concerns the issues that you may have uh-huh. bring that with you um and ask those questions. And when we answer, if we say something that you don't understand, don't be too embarrassed to ask. Yeah, stop us. Stop <laughs> us. So that, and, and, and if there's something that I want the patient to remember to do, I write it down or I get my staff to write it down. To make sure that Beautiful. when they leave there, uh-huh. they leave there with something to do something that they know they have to remember. So when they leave the visit, they go with a goal, Mm -hmm. something to work on. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Well, I can't thank you enough for being our guest here today. It has been incredible learning about you and also really being able to acknowledge the kind of work that you're doing because it's so necessary out there. We, we need more people like you to be able to work with our seniors and, and give them some reassurance that there are people out there that really do care. So please tell the audience one more time how they can get a hold of you. Well, you can get a hold of me in Tamarack on Knob Hill Road. That's Medical Center Affiliates on Knob Hill Road. The number is 954-718-8700. And in Deerfield on the corner of 10th Street and Military Trail. And the number there is 954-570-7270. Thank you so very much. It was great to have you. Uh, We're going to take a small commercial break here now, so don't leave. Come on back, because we've got some more people for you to meet. Thank you so much. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At Old County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications 
and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out of pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care Inc. at 954 717 7027. License 20099096. You are listening to You and Your Doctor Living Longer and Healthier an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470 and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. (laughs) Hi, welcome back. This is You and Your Doctors, uh, AMP to Productions, and it's sponsored by All County Healthcare. And I want to welcome all of our Facebook listeners. Uh, we are live now, All County Healthcare on Facebook. Just tap in, and you'll you'll watch us live. The other thing you can do also is that you can watch us live on AllCountyHealthcare.com. As a matter of fact, they are streaming us live, and WWNNRadio.com as well. So we want to welcome, if you're on Facebook and you have any questions for any of our guests, please just uh, jot them down, um, send it to us, or give us a call. Give us a call at All County Healthcare at seven at 888-717-7170. And just ask for Maddie. She would love to answer any of your health care needs. Um, so we have a couple of guests here. Um, that have come in from Whitehall. I've got my little card here from Whitehall uh, in Boca Raton. And they're going to talk to us all about their little uh, boutique rehab center. So if you have any questions, by the way, here at the station for our guests, please call 888-565-1470. We would love to hear from you. So, without any further ado, welcome, <laughs> welcome Thank you. Thank you. to the show, uh, you and your doctor, and um, if you can introduce yourself and, and tell us about Whitehall. Sure. My name is Trevor Matcham. I'm the administrator at Whitehall Boca Raton. Uh-huh. It's a skilled nursing and rehab center in uh, southern Palm Beach County. Okay. And Great. And with me today, I have... Uh, Norma. Go ahead, Norma. Yes, hello. My name is Norma Guerrero, and I'm an occupational therapist um, at Whitehall Boca as well. Oh, okay. Great. Great. What's the address so that they know? The address is 7300 Del Prado Circle South, Boca Raton, Florida, 33428. 33433. Okay. And uh, telephone number, but go slow because okay. they're, they're going to be yeah. writing it down. <laughs> Our phone number is 561 392 3000. Okay, great. Super. So welcome both of you to the show, you and your doctors. It's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about Whitehall. What makes you different? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Whitehall um, is a special facility in, in Boca. Mm-hmm. We provide skilled nursing and rehab care mm-hmm. um, to residents in, in Palm Beach County and Northern Broward County. Um, we focus on rehabilitation with occupational, speech, and physical therapy. Um, and Norma's an occupational therapist. Yeah, she, we're going to find out all about her in a few moments. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the, about the different therapy disciplines and some of the specialties that we um, provide at, at Whitehall. 
Okay, great. So what made you decide, uh, have you been in this line of business um, for a long time? or? Actually, um, I've been working as a nursing home administrator since 1992. So wow. pushing 25 years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's um, fabulous. And I actually started working um, in a nursing home uh, in the eighth grade back in 1983. Oh my I was God. washing supper dishes and worked my way through high school and college in a nursing home and just loved it and decided to be an administrator. So it's a passion oh for me. Oh my goodness, it sure is. Wow, that has really, you knew it at a very young age as well. Yeah. I've, I've worked in almost every role in a facility, except for a therapist. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, you know, we need some therapists and, and we mm -hmm. absolutely need administrators. So... That's very, very interesting. It's it's amazing how, where we find our passions and, and the age that we find it at, too. That's why I thought it was very interesting to ask you some of those questions. So how long have you been with Whitehall? You know, I'm relatively new with Whitehall. I've been there about six months, going okay. on six months. Um, Great. I think it's a wonderful facility, and I'm really enjoying uh, getting to know the people in the community. Uh -huh. Excellent. So um, how many beds do you have we have 154 wow. skilled and intermediate beds. Wow, that's that's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's Excellent. a large facility. It is. About 82,000 square feet. Wow, that is really interesting. So, and you have, it, it sounds like um, you have these different therapies to help the patients get back on their feet. And, and tell us, tell me a little bit, tell us a, a little bit about that. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, I'd, be, okay. I'd, be, I'd be happy to tell you about that. We have um, we have three different disciplines of therapy that mm -hmm. is available to the patients, and most patients get all of those those therapies. There's physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. And if it's necessary, they'll receive speech therapy. Mm -hmm. And I myself have been a therapist there for a little bit over 10 years. Oh, my goodness. And I've been doing this for 22 years, so half of my... My career um, professionally has been at Whitehall, so wow. it's been part of my home. It's been part of my life, yeah. and um, I find it to be a really, really great place to work. And I've learned so much about people, about medicine, about therapy, um, even more than mm -hmm. I did as when I went into it. Mm -hmm. um, so when patients go to the hospital and they find themselves in a situation where they need to get extended rehabilitation in order to get back home, mm -hmm. we're able to provide those services to them and help them get stronger and get back home and get back on their feet. Wow. So well, that's... it's been a pleasure and a joy to be able to do that and help yeah. people with that. That's amazing. So when did you find your passion for what you do? Well, it was I, it, I, I fell and hurt my knee. I injured it when I was 15, mm -hmm. actually playing soccer. In high school here and locally in Coral Springs oh, okay and I ended up through the the gamut of therapy myself and as I finished high school and ended up in in college I ended up just learning a little bit more and more about it and that's what led me into the field wow. of occupational therapy oh, okay yeah, so, yeah I just love hearing you know yeah. what has ignited that passion what happens you know as we're growing up yeah, that, for me it happened very early on and it really made my life a lot easier as a young, you know, 20 year old, 21 year old at the time. Uh -huh. And so I was able to just stay very focused. Um, but after I started getting involved in working in different facilities, uh -huh. I found that actually here at Whitehall, I'm actually able to treat every single type of patient. And that's actually what the beauty that Whitehall has to offer really? is that we have the experience that no matter what the diagnosis is, whether uh -huh. it is. Um, orthopedic, whether it's a hip replacement, knee replacement, uh, shoulder replacement, whether it's neurological, brain injury, uh, spinal cord injury, whether it's a surgical, medical surgical need where someone uh -huh. had um, a cardiac problem, a pulmonary problem, that we're able to treat every single one of those diagnoses and um, provide whatever needs that those patients have. That is remarkable. Yes. That is really, because I don't think that there's many out there that that really target uh, that many different uh, situations or or individuals that are dealing with those mm -hmm. those various injuries. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there's a couple other areas that um, are unique to Whitehall that we have to offer, and that's um, a couple different things. And one of them is our neurooptometry program. Is that oftentimes people have neurological conditions where 
um, their vision is impacting their balance. And then mm-hmm. when their balance is impacted, that's what increases falls. Right. So whether it was a previous problem they had or it's a new problem coming from like a stroke or a brain injury, mm-hmm. we have a specialty doctor in our co- community called Dr. Lampert who comes in and assesses the, not just the visual acuity that you normally get from your eye doctor, but also the, the functional muscular uh, motor component. And then he offers and suggests some exercises, just like we exercise our muscles for mm-hmm. when you break your hip. You can also exercise your eye muscles um, in order yes. to improve your balance and to prevent further injury. And so we do find that patients can read better. They can um, find their equilibrium better as a result of that. So that's one specialty that we offer at Whitehall. That's really mm-hmm. interesting because um, I had heard of that probably uh, 30 years ago where it was the real nuance where all of a sudden they were exercising your eyes to help the vision and a lot of uh individuals end up coming off of glasses because of it right but right that's very interesting how you have incorporated that within your rehab center well this the geriatric population especially here in boca raton they they have live long healthy lives they're mm-hmm. very active and they um want to stay strong and they want to get back to those lives and so yeah. if we can reduce that fall prevention mm-hmm. risk and they can you know resume going back into their, their lives with their families or their social lives, they really kind of really embrace um, anything that's going to help them to reduce their risk of fall. That's that's very impressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very mm-hmm. impressive. So you have uh, three different types of therapies that are going mm-hmm. on, the physical therapy, and that's to get the individual strong again and, and build up the muscle. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you have the occupational therapy, mm-hmm. which helps them uh, do the daily chores, am I correct? And in, in, well, when you're going back home, being mm-hmm. able to, you know, maneuver around. Uh, well, you explain it. <laughs> sure, sure. I would, I would, you, would you, you describe it as activities of daily living? Yes. And so you break yes. those down into three components of your life, no matter what age you are. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, work, rest, and play. Okay. And so in this population, when we're dealing with injury or illness, their work becomes their ability to get out of bed. Their ability mm-hmm. to walk, their ability to dress themselves, um, be able to get in and out of the bathroom. Um, so, or just one of buttoning the, their clothes right, too, and just yes. or feeding themselves. Feeding so themselves, we, yeah. So we work on those things, but sometimes to get to that point, you need to focus on the the physical therapy, which we get involved in as well, strengthening the upper body, strengthening the hands, and then as that strength comes, now you can focus on returning that independence. Mm-hmm. And if need be, we have to offer adaptations, whether it's adaptive equipment or whatever type of medical equipment they may need to maintain that independence or increase the the least amount of assist that's necessary. Excellent. So um, we're able to help people just regain their independence with their activities of daily living. I love that. I love that. So usually what kind of um, individuals do you see that come in to you, Trevor? Well, someone that might um, have had an injury or maybe an illness. Maybe they've unfortunately had a stroke, or maybe they fell at home and broke a hip. Uh-huh. Um, they're in the hospital, and they're, they're there, and the doctor says, well, you're going to need some rehab. Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, case manager at the hospital will come to them and talk to them and tell them they, they're going to need to go to a facility for rehab, short-term rehab. Mm-hmm. Um, they would come to Whitehall, uh, go through the admissions process, get in there, meet their therapist. Uh, we have a lot of people that come back to us. They've made relationships, made friends with their therapists, oh, with their really? nurses. Oh, really? Wow. And, um, when they uh, might have elected to have a knee replaced or some work done, uh-huh. and they'll come to us for a week or two and get some therapy, and then back on the tennis court or or maybe golf, <laughs> golf course. Golf. Yeah, golf, it's dangerous stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, that's only because I'm. I've only. Throws I, I'm, your shoulder. I'm still trying it. I mean, I've only been playing for like three years, two and a half years, or whatever. I've never had so many injuries <laughs> just with mm-hmm. that, you know, stick and trying to hit it. But yeah, it, it, but it's fun. It's a great uh, social outlet and everything to be able to get out and. Well, that thank you for sharing with that. You know You're that welcome. information. Um, what else? You know, Whitehall sounds as if it's been very well established in the community. Mm-hmm. How else do you go out into the community and and help the individuals? Well, I can answer that. Okay. Um, I can. <laughs> As part of the rehabilitation program, we have a program that's called our Transitional Rehab Program. 
And so usually um, lengths of stay can vary from two, four, six, eight, or even longer, depending on um, the, the depth of their injury or illness. Mm -hmm. So as patients approach their last week or two, you know, we can forecast that a little bit as we do that discharge planning. Mm -hmm. We recommend um, that the patient participate in our transition to rehab program. And this program offers mm -hmm a unique set of education and actual activities. And some of them are um, the community reentry, as you asked, you ah, know, what do we do in the community? And yes. so um, on a weekly basis, uh, we actually have a, a bus, a vehicle, where they have to climb up a few steps. And they're stronger at the latter part of their, their stay. Mm -hmm. And um, they get on the bus and they either go to like a local Dunkin' Donuts or a local Starbucks or um, some sort of local uh, restaurant or coffee shop where they can actually practice walking now on pavement, going up a ramp, opening up a door to a restaurant, sitting in chairs that aren't a wheelchair or, or something, just basically starting to get them to feel what it's like to resume activity um, gotcha. outside of the hospital. Yeah, and that's so very they usually cool. have a lot of fun. And when they come back, they actually come back empowered mm -hmm. and more focused mm -hmm. in that last week or two of their therapy. I and like that. And you see that they just get more driven because they start to see the light. Yeah, and, yeah. And the hope, so... Um, and, and not only that, it builds their confidence. It does. You know, and they're not afraid because a lot of times, you know, they'll be sitting there and, and just trying to get up off of a chair and how to position themselves properly to get that, that strength, yes. that oomph, you yes. know, that will take them straight up. It, it can be really nerve wracking. It can be and embarrassing on some yeah. level, too. So they also participate um, on a weekly basis, uh, those in, in the transition program in a breakfast group. Oh. Like eight thirty in the morning, well, they'll come down, and the day before they'll have already have ordered, kind of picked out something they like, and they get to prepare their own hot meal and move around the kitchen, and that's where oh, we focus on excellent. the safety with the walker, or with the cane, or with or without yeah. the device. Make sure that whatever precautions the doctor has prescribed to them, that they're maintaining those precautions, uh -huh. so that they can actually now see themselves at home doing this in their own apartment. Mm -hmm. And as part of that transition program, there's education. We bring in a life alert representative mm -hmm. to come educate them about the, the little button that they can press in case they need assistance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, we educate them about durable medical equipment, what types of um, equipment they can order in their home for the shower. Uh, for the kitchen, for reachers, walkers, sh uh, shower chairs, ramps. Um, and they all, we also offer them information about home health services. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes people go home, their therapy doesn't end. They get therapy at home. Oh, wonderful. So we want them to have that contact with the home health agency, kind of like all county. Yes. And so that way they learn about that. Because this is sometimes a very, very new experience for everybody. Oh, yes. And so every little bit of information they tend to absorb, and mm -hmm. we, but we try to give it to them at the layers that they can um, experience it. Well, that's really yeah, and, and yeah. Re retrieve it. Yeah, and and be able to hold on to it and understand what they're yes. yes and so that exactly. transition program really helps in that process. That's really interesting. Yes. That's great. Well, I just like to say thank you again to All County Healthcare for providing our show this evening. You can see us every Tuesday evening between six and seven. We have some of the top professionals from the community to here to uh, answer any of your questions. You can always call into the radio show, 888-565-1470. Or you can also call All County Healthcare. And that telephone number is 888-717-7170. Just ask for Maddie. She would love to be able to help you with any of your health care needs. So back to our guests. So um, Whitehall has been around for quite some time. They've been in the, the community for a long time. And you spent most of your career there, a, a good half of it, yes. from what you had said. Um, one of the things that I really am enjoying hearing is how you manage to really build the self-esteem and self-confidence of these individuals that have gone through, tra you know, traumatic uh, situations and how you bring them back into a level of quality in their life. You know, one of the things I always say is y you have a quality of life, you have quantity of life. They, they work together hand in hand. So it's very interesting to hear about the health care that you um, give to your patients. One of the questions, though, I'd like to ask is uh, insurance, you know, and costs. Now, you were talking about the transitional uh, um, 
program that you have, is that also, well, let me ask you about the uh, Medicare uh, uh, insurance well, we do, we do accept uh, Medicare as a payment source, Medicare and an um, array of other insurances, and, and also Medicaid. Um, we do okay. have a, a wing that we can take some long-term care uh, Medicaid patients. Wow, that's very, that's very cool. And uh, is that uh, transitional program, is that also covered by Medicare and, and some of the other? Oh, yes. Everything's, in- everything like that is covered under, under the Medicare benefits, yes. Okay. All yeah, right. when a patient has had a hospital stay, and they get transitioned and uh, go to a skilled nursing facility for rehab. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they continue to demonstrate progress with their rehab, they can continue to stay. Medicare uh, Medicare offers a, an extended amount of days for that. Gotcha. And once they kind of approach like a, a plateau or no longer have skilled nursing needs, mm-hmm. um, that's when we start to transition them home. But what we also offer is we also offer outpatient therapy services. Oh, too. So okay. after the patient goes home and maybe does a, a month's care of home health, mm-hmm. because they've kind of gotten familiar with the therapist, they oftentimes want to come back to us and receive their outpatient therapy services. But even if they haven't been with us before, anyone who gets a prescription for their doctor for back pain, knee pain, um, in, uh, gait imbalance, um, uh, whatever it is, they can just come directly into us for outpatient therapy services um, because we have the the equipment that's available as a clinic as well. Wow. So along with the skilled nursing. Mm-hmm. And we also offer a, um, a specialty that's not, I wanted to add that as far as when you asked me before what is what is unique, uh-huh. is there's, there's lymphedema therapy. And lymphedema therapy is when there's abnormal swelling in the lymphatic drainage system in your body. Uh-huh. It, you oftentimes may see someone who had cancer and they get the, li- they had, the lymph nodes are removed uh-huh. out of their body, whether it be toward, in their legs or in their upper arms, and they have this abnormal swelling um, in their body. Or it can also can occur not, non-related to cancer, but it requires a very, very delicate, special type of treatment by a physical or an occupational therapist that has been um, either had some advanced training or advanced certification, and we offer that service there. We have some therapists that have been many years of performing lymphatic therapy, and anyone who has lymphedema knows that it requires uh, patience. It requires a special type of manual type of massage that is yeah. not like your typical type of massage. You can't right. be aggressive. It right. has to be very gentle, and you have to understand the lymph system. And it also requires a special type of wrapping. Wow. And that, in conjunction with monitoring it with your doctor, because you're now pushing fluid, it can, it can be very um, critical mm-hmm. to people's respiratory and cardiac status. So to have therapists that know how to do that and then have the staff that the nursing home provides of, of uh, advanced nurse practitioners and with doctors that are available on staff mm-hmm. um, to help monitor um, patients' response to that fluid overload, Mm-hmm. Um, as we try to push it out of the body, mm-hmm. uh, the patients are happy when they receive um, that type of attention to the care. Oh, my so goodness, yes. lymphedema therapy is also something we offer. That's very, Hall. yeah, that is really unusual. I have not heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard of the uh, massage therapists that do the uh, lymphatic massages, but I've not heard of a rehab center that really, you know, uh, dedicates and has therapists for individuals that are dealing with, you know, excess fluids within the lymphatic um, system. Well, because we receive so many patients with so many different diagnoses, that patient that has the lymphedema problem may come in because they ended up with some sort of cardiac problem or some sort of hip or knee problem. So the lymphedema could be their secondary problem. Mm -hmm. So now at least we're suited to be able to handle both at the same time. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. Um, usually, what are the ages that you see your patients coming in at? Is it very? Well, uh, they they range from someone in their fifties. We okay. see, um, but but a lot of times in their seventies, eighties. Um, but we we see quite a few in their fifties or sixties that that elected to have their knee done or uh, maybe their ankle mm-hmm. or something. Um, and they need some therapy for a few weeks to get, to get up to speed again and able uh-huh. to get back to their life. Uh-huh. So uh, it, it ranges in the 50s on up. We have some people over 100. Uh, that, no that way, live there. really? Yeah. 
and they're amazing. Centurions. And they're amazing. Yeah. Oh my they call goodness. Whippersnappers. Oh, yeah. oh uh, okay. And, yeah. You have a been, special name for they, them, huh? They've been around the block, and and let me tell you, it. I am so so impressed at how many 80, 90 plus year old people who they still have a passion for life, the desire to be stronger, the desire to live. And and it's not only solely sometimes because they have the family component and, you know, some people just internally have a drive. Mm -hmm. And when we see that, you know, we'll encourage anybody regardless of what state or condition they're in. Um, but when we see that, it, it they motivate us. Yeah, and when it's you incredible. Live in a, when you live in a community like South Florida, yes. you meet a lot of people like that, and it's inspiring, and it's it just makes you um, kind of smile. <laughs> kind of smile. It makes yeah. you smile. <laughs> it makes you smile when the, when people have a passion for life, even yeah. when you see them um, when they're you know in their elder age, and yeah, and they're motivating. That that is amazing. Yeah. I'm I'm laughing because it's like, oh, absolutely. I you know I can see myself. I, I was laughing before because I like to wear heels, and I was laughing to somebody. I said, oh yeah, I can see myself at a hundred years old. I'll still have the the tall heels, mm -hmm. the pointy <laughs> shoes, you know, and dressing in the little skirts and everything, and just having the time of my life. Well, it has been absolutely wonderful having you both here. Please tell us again what your address is, how to get a hold of you, your website, uh, telephone number. Um, well, thank you. You sure will. Uh, our address is 7300 Del Prado Circle South, Boca Raton, Florida, 33433. And our phone number is 561-392-3000. Uh -huh. And our website is whitehallboca.com. Excellent, excellent. Um, the other thing that I'd like to uh, say is how how it has been such um, enlightening to have you here to understand all the other ways in which uh, we can take care of our elderly, of our seniors. And so I want to really commend the, the you, your staff, everybody for uh, coming and being on the show tonight and for everything that you do for our seniors. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's so rewarding to know that you're out there and that uh, the seniors are having life again and that they're happy and that they're feeling alive and youthful. So I, I just want to say thank you again for, for being with us tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Well, that about does it for our show tonight. If you have any questions, you've got our telephone number, 888-565-1470. Um, please give us a call. Let us know what you think of the show. And if you happen to be a doctor or a professional in the medical field, please give us a call. We'd love to have you on the show. So thanks again. Have a great week. We'll see you next week, Tuesday from 6 to 7, right here. Okay, bye. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.